Oh, hello. Good morning, Fiona. Good morning, David. How are you? Fine, thank you. Now, dear viewer, um, I've, uh, we've referred to Fiona several times, but you don't believe she exists because you've never seen her. Uh, and then last week you heard her but didn't see her. It was like a voice coming out of the dark lagoon, and uh, we were very sorry for that, but it was still a bit of fun anyway. Yeah. Uh, and, but uh, Fiona stood in a very short notice because... Uh, the Reverends Neary and Grask uh, are on holiday, not together. I hasten to add, they are well and truly apart with their uh, with their prospective husbands and wives and families, and uh, and, and that is good. And so Fiona has stood in, and she she's not quite sure what to expect or what's going to go on at this precise moment. No. Nope. Um, and if I'm honest, neither do I. But then that's nothing unusual any week with with Rev Chat, as as, as you know. And so, uh, so Fiona is uh, is ready, uh, theologically topped up, which is a worry to me uh, about, <laughs> about 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 all of this. And as keen as, and as keen as curates always are, you know, to uh, to prove their um their their, their worth, which is uh, which is always dangerous uh, personally. So it's good to see you all, and uh, and uh, we're looking forward to this um, next. Um, few moments of um of deep theological reflection on the next stage of the uh, of the easter story so that's where i leave i'll leave it to fiona if you want deep theological uh, reflection on on the next part of the story but there we are so it's all good and are you well fiona i'm absolutely fine yeah hot good. nice the sun's out it's beaming i'm happy you're, you're a sun person aren't you oh yeah i like to be hot See, I, I, we, know, we know this because I can tell you, you must be warming up because you've got rid of your overcoat and you've still got your fleece jumper on, but your overcoat has gone. So that's yep. a good sign. And the hat, you haven't got your hat on either. So that's a good. No, one layer a, at a time. That's, that's all good. Yeah, so that's it. Oh, yeah. Don't get too excited in one go, will you? No. Particularly in Mosterton. Yeah, you've got to be very careful in Mosterton. Yeah. It gets a bit exciting if you take more than one layer off at a time of there. But um, but uh, but but there there we are. So it, it's all good. And uh, in a moment, I'm going to read uh, a passage from um, St John's uh, uh, Gospel, carrying on from where we left off. Uh, uh, would have left off last week. And um, but there's no Chris to read it, Fiona, is there? No, absolutely. I'm devastated. No, Chris. So I'm going to have to read it uh, instead. And hopefully get it all uh, all nicely done. So uh, so there we are. So what we do now, Fiona, is we take a pause. Okay. That means we just that means we're just quiet. And having paused, I now read from St John's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 19 to verse 31. When it was evening on that day of the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciple told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house. And Thomas was with them, although the doors were shut. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Hang on, I'm going to cathedral moment. I'm turning two pages over. Jesus said to them, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Or if you are. Uh, you won't understand the reference to the cathedral moment. On Maundy Thursday, the poor deacon who was reading the gospel for the Christmas turned two pages without realising and uh, had to be stopped in mid-flow. It, it almost happened. I turned two pages, but luckily I knew most of that uh, part of the story anyway off by heart. So we escaped, I think, Fiona, we escaped. There we are. So St John tells us again about Jesus appearing to the disciples. Where would you have been in that story? Come on, Fiona. Well, I might have been where Thomas was, actually, because I think Thomas was going through some... He needed to be on his own. And I, I'm a, a dweller and I'm a reflector and I like to just think things out by myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't know if I would have been in the group, uh, especially locked in a room uh, for a week with I don't know how many. So I might have been Thomas off just going through the whole scenario of what happened on that week. Uh, but, yeah, so I might have been outside the room, away from the everybody and trying to figure it out by myself. And um, But Thomas might not have been doing that. Thomas might have been doing something else. So, but, yeah. So it's challenging, isn't it? I would have been freaking out and probably hiding from the Jews as all of them were. So, um, yeah. So I would have come back eventually into the group like Thomas did. Yeah. From that story, I've always liked and played on the words that the men, the disciples, the men, were locked behind doors for fear, but the women were out there getting on with it. Yeah, no, it's typical. Isn't and uh, uh, and I've, always, I've, always, I've always played on that particular part of Scripture. Here they are. And Jesus comes to them. Yeah. And then we get through the door. We don't know. And, uh, and uh, there are lots on there of writings and trying to work out, you know, what? how did Jesus get in? Did he slip under a crack under the door? Did he come through? We've no idea. All we know yeah. is that Jesus, all we know is that Jesus came and stood among them. And for the first time, they recognised well, I, I find it quite interesting, though. You know, he's got to prove. He says, look, peace be with you. Here's my hands. Here's my side. It's like he's God and he's just come, <laughs> appeared in the middle of them. Why does he have to show his hands and side? Because he literally has just come through the door right in the middle of them. Can you imagine what they must have been thinking in that room when he was yeah, I think I think the part of this story for me is that it reflects, as you said earlier, it reflects us and many other people. We are the Thomases, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the doubting, you know, because we're not sure. And I often say at funerals when I read about doubting Thomas who turns up in that John 14 passage about there are many rooms in my father's house. It's Thomas again who says, how do we know where we're going? Because you've never taken us there. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and I often say that's me and you, because I think with a lot of us in in doubting Thomas. Yeah, and no, the one yeah. thing the one thing about for me about faith is that it's about believing and trusting in something that we have no ultimate proof about. No, true, true. And the thing is uh, he says, I will not believe until I see, which is which is quite interesting because the blessing we're given at the end, a bit like blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. So mm. it's an incredible blessing that Jesus says at, at that point. 
for us and an encouragement, really. And for me, this takes a long time. It's not a quick fix, instant scenario. And um, being resurrected people is a lifetime, you know, being Christ-like. We, we just don't get it in a day. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. I mean, that's part of what part of what we often describe, isn't it, as being our faith is a, is a journey. Yeah, we, you can put whatever word you want in front of that pilgrim face, whatever. Mm-hmm. But it, but but the whole of life, if you're following in Jesus's footsteps, is a continuing learning, growing journey. We never stop learning, do we? No, and it's quite interesting how this passage has got time in it. It's a week till Jesus appeared to the first disciples, and then another week till Thomas. So that's indicating. Quite a lot of, you know, it's not just instant. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. But I, I can't imagine what they must have felt. What would you think if you saw Jesus right in the midst of you? You've just gone through his death and everything of the weekend and a week on. What would you think being in that room, literally? Yeah, and that's, and that's, that's a good question. And uh, once or twice, I guess, of my life, I've tried to put myself. That's part of the beauty of if you can try and put yourself into the story. I think the two things, first of all, I'd be totally amazed, you know, shocked, amazed, um, perhaps fearful. What on earth is all this about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, you know, this this chap died. We saw it for us. Oh yeah, somebody said he came back on on uh, on three days later. Oh, and that woman Mary told us she'd seen him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, because n- not all of them saw him or were at the cross, were they? No, no, no. He died. So and so they're there. Um, of this fear, which I guess if if your leader of a what was seen as a, a kind of um, group that were trying to be subversive against the the, the, the rulers, um, and they will they, the rulers wanted to get rid of them. You would be fearful of that. So I can understand perhaps being hidden away. Mm-hmm. I just love the words hidden behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. I think, uh, and uh, but of course it's typically John because he puts uh, he, he does put a, Semit- a Semitic suggestion in that it's the Jews when actually was it the Jews or the Romans that yeah. they should have been more fearful about. You can argue that as Joe raised slightly last week, and I think it's a very interesting point and perhaps something we don't we don't see. So I think I think as all of those kind of things, if I were there, I, I it it would be a, an absolute amazement. Uh, and to watch, you know, we don't know whether Thomas put his hands into his side or stuck his no. finger into the hole in his hand. We've no idea. We Absolutely not. But the thing is, it's quite interesting. Jesus gives the disciples the biggest gift, the Holy Spirit. But then what? After after he says the sentences about yeah. sin, your sin is forgiven. But what else? Does he just disappear or... You know, it just doesn't yeah. really say. It's like, is it really? We don't, we don't, we don't know at the moment because he's still in dialogue. After, after he's breathed the the, the, whole, the gift of the spirit upon them, and we know that they then go out and start to use that gift for some of the other stories that you know that we saw. I mean, yesterday morning's story in uh, in Luke's gospel, of communion, is the disciples healed the crippled man, didn't they? Suddenly, and that that story is part of this story, but in Luke's gospel, in many ways. But John doesn't record that. All, all we know is that he breathes the gift of the Holy Spirit for them to use. Yeah. And we, but we tend, we, tend to, we tend to, if we're not careful, overlook that at this moment because we, we major on the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, don't we? Yeah. But he's already given it, according to John, yeah. to the disciples. No, it's brilliant. And it really does challenge me, in a sense, This just this little passage here because... It says, what, what do I lock in? Because these mm. guys were frightened. They had fear in them, you know, yeah. and they were locked in that fear and they were petrified and they weren't moving. And Jesus comes in and brings peace, brings the Holy Spirit, and then say, get out of the house. And it's like we tend to have anxiety and fear and everything sometimes locked in ourselves and we just can't get out. And that release is Jesus just bringing the peace, bringing 
Islam and I think the last bit before that, what you've obviously added in bit to try and prove what John is, is saying, the very last from verse 29, well, verse 29 as it is, Jesus said, have you believed because you have seen me? Yeah. Is that the only reason you're believing? Because blessed are those who've not seen but yet believe. And that's us in many ways today, isn't it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Totally. We, we, may, we may believe we've engaged with the Holy Spirit, as most, you know, a lot of people do believe they've been visited. And, and, and I recognise that a few years ago, as, you, as people know from the stories I've shared. You know, but, but it's a visual, the actual visual thing, it, it, you know, you, we, none of us have seen Jesus in person. But there's something so engaging about the truth and the story as we've received it and, and understand it um, that keeps us wanting to search more because that's part of our Christian faith journey, isn't it? As we say, we keep on searching, we keep on looking. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I do like Thomas's declaration, my Lord and my God. Yeah. All that. And it's just so powerful. It, because you just can't imagine Jesus saying, look, touch my side, touch, you know, come on, Thomas, you, you were doubting. And, um, well, he was disbelieving. And then all of a sudden, my gosh, he had a, a full impact. <laughs> it was, he couldn't escape, could he? It's like... No, no, no. But, well, the, the interesting thing is the door wasn't locked. I find no. that interesting because... The door was locked or not locked? Not Sorry. locked, it was just closed, it was just closed. And it's been a shift from closed doors to now an unlocked door. And now Jesus is saying, right, believe. Well, according to the beginning, it says that um, the disciples, had, that in the house where the disciples had met, the doors were locked for fear of the Jews. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And now when Thomas meets uh, mm. Jesus, the door is just shut. Just shut. Yeah, there we are. In a, a movement from the fear factor. Yeah. And it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And then... And then it, it, yeah. And then it ends, of course, with that bit, as I say, where John is trying to prove what he's written, I think, in many ways. You know, there are many others that have seen this and uh, it's all written down. And uh, if you, you know, if you were reading that within the immediacy of John writing it, if ever that happened, and I can't believe he probably ever did, you know, because of the, the, the what they yeah the, what they would do or, or if you heard John telling you you know he's saying look if you don't believe me it's a bit like Paul in later on if you don't believe me five hundred other people saw it there's always this wanting to try and early on in the day in the days of of of, of writing of, of trying to say it isn't just me no no you say this there are others as well, well so it's, uh, no, Th Thomas doesn't believe the disciples. Thomas does it. I'm like, I'm not going to believe you until I see it. You know, <laughs> he's point blank. Isn't again, <laughs> again, Fiona, isn't that isn't that often us? Yeah, totally. Like, like however, yeah. faithful, however faithful we try to be, there's still that kind of you know, you know, you know I'm, I'm still searching, or I wish I'd seen, or you know, it, it's in the back of our minds. Absolutely. And um, you know. What what I do admire in so many people, particularly those perhaps who live in the religious life, although many of those I'm sure Deb, because I've met them and had this kind of discussion, this absolute certainty is very rarely found. And when yeah. it is, as Rowan Williams once said, I, I think it was Rowan Williams once said, when you become certain, uh, you're beginning to have to start again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. You know, when you, yeah, I can see you know, that. I really can and, see uh, that. Because that's the one thing. We cannot be certain until perhaps the last day when we're called or whatever. No, no. And but that's the beauty about it. And there's just such a peace about it. The whole passage is peaceful. Jesus mm -hmm. is bringing the peace, the shalom. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's like, yeah. calm down. I'm here. I'm with you. You've got uh, the Holy Spirit with you. You're leading. I'll be with you when you go out. I think, and I think that is key, uh, is that you've just raised, that it is about Jesus giving them that confidence now to go on. Absolutely. You and know, yes. right, I've died, I'm resurrected as promised, and I have to go again. Now it is up to you. Yeah. Be, be, be blessed. Be blessed. And there we are. Well, Fiona, thank you very, very much. A very interesting discussion. 
And uh, thank you for giving up the very early part of your day off. Now go and take your, your, your dog car and everything else off. No, but I'll rephrase that. Take your dog car off and get changed. <laughs> and go and enjoy your day off. It's a nice sunny day. Go and, go, go and have a, a bike ride or something. I will. And... Uh, and uh, and and enjoy enjoy your day off and uh, you know who knows dear viewer you know if by popular request uh, you flood the airwaves with request for Fiona to come back she may reappear at a, at another given time we never know but uh, we're not sure these days any anybody who feels they want to come and debate with us we're more than happy to do so but it's been a pure delight thank you Fiona all you've got to do now is whiz this straight over to our comms expert. It will make us both look extremely good and, ex uh, and excellent in what in what in what we've done, yeah. and uh, and of course we we look forward to seeing uh, Chris back. He's over his COVID, and he was back at work and uh, enjoying the Easter cer ceremonies and services. Joe is having a well earned uh, break, and we wish her well, and hopefully see her next week. And um, we don't know what's happened to Sarah, who was the other dark person last week. She's probably in an office somewhere in the diocese yeah. working away. But it's been good fun. Good to see you. Now, dear viewer, I can never remember this, but of course, you can follow us on all the usual platforms. If you're a if you're a, an avid follower via Chris Grass, then you'll know the address of the Egerton to Colmer's team, uh, including TikTok and all the rest of the Chris does. Uh, and if you're a follower of the Bem Institute, it's on the Bem Institute team dot whatever and all the rest, you will find us. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.